Hello and welcome to the Bora Breakdown podcast, the lowdown on Rodrigo Muniz show with Johnny and Dana. We are the Bora podcast that gives you all of your Rodrigo Muniz chatter in a podcast. Um, and on Sunday, Bora announced the sign of the new number nine. Uh, the Brazilian joins Bora on a season-long loan from Fulham to help Bora, help bolster Bora's attacking threat. But before we get our thoughts as tradition uh, on these lowdown videos, let's get a perspective from a different uh, fan uh, from an opposition. So we've got this this time we've got Sam from Fulhamish Podcast to give us a bit more understanding about Bora's new man. Hey guys, hope you're good. Sammy here from Fulhamish. I uh, just thought I'd give you a few thoughts on Rodrigo Muniz as I see he signed for you on loan. And all I can say is that this is a really, really interesting transfer. I am not 100% sure how it will work out because... Rodrigo Muniz last year was a bit of an enigma. Um, it was a really protracted transfer. It took us ages to get him across the line. He was specifically picked by Marco Silva, he, we believe. Um, and although Fulham's transfer policy doesn't normally work in that way, um, the Fulham board seemed to give Marco dispensation that this particular player was so special that we had to get him in. And, and he cost quite a bit of money as well. He was about seven, eight million. When he came in, it was always really difficult for him because we had Alexander Mitrovic and our style of football generally was with one up top. So he didn't get an awful lot of chances to play. And and when he did, it was often quite difficult for him. Quite often, Silva would put him up top late on in the game when we needed to get a draw or a win. And, and him and Mitrovic together as a two up front just really didn't work. The times that we saw Rodrigo Muniz at his best was when Mitrovic couldn't play in a game. Uh, I think there was one uh, where he was suspended, as one where he was injured. Um, particularly the, the memory is of when Fulham beat Stoke 3 2 last season. Mitrovic was out and we had to put Rodrigo Muniz up front. And we were all thinking, oh no, this is going to be a really tough day. Um, and then Rodrigo Muniz just lit up the place. Um, he scored a fantastic opener just as Fulham had gone 1-0 down. He arguably scored a second goal that got taken away from him as but because Fabio Carvalho got a little touch, but, but it was Rodrigo Muniz's goal. He also assisted the third. And all round, he was just such a handful. The Stoke defence didn't know whether to track him, whether to follow him. He was so physical up front. He's got tricks for days. And so in that performance, we saw what the potential of Rodrigo Muniz was, but it was difficult for him because whenever he got opportunities off the bench, it was always quite tricky for him. However, his actual goal scoring per minutes ratio last season was actually very, very good for us, better than even Alexander Mitrovic's. So I think there's bags of potential. He just needs a team that's going to play him most weeks. Hopefully that is you guys, because there's definitely a fantastic striker in there, but he just needs a run of games. And when you're behind Mitro, that's not going to happen easily. Um, he loves to try the spectacular, by the way. Uh, you're going to see a lot of bicycle kicks uh, from Rodrigo Moon as it feels like he tries one every single game. He's also just like the happiest guy in the world. He's always playing with a smile on his face. He seems to be very, very popular, um, which will hopefully be good news for, for team morale. He definitely seems like kind of a happy chap to have around the place. So if Chris Wilder can find a way to build the team around him and make him feel like he is the number one striker, and then hopefully you'll see the best out of him. But he's young, he's raw, and so there's an element of trepidation uh, with him on this low move. But I, I really hope um, it works out for him and for you guys because I think there's a special player in there. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how he goes. Thanks for having me on. Thank you very much for that, Sammy. So good goal scoring ratio, potential quite raw, good movement. When he got his chance, he took it out Fulham uh, last season. I think this could be a really good fit for us. You know, appreciate that it's another young striker, 21 year old, and he's still got a point to prove in need of minutes. But I feel like there is talent there. You know, Borough after him for about well, last season, for about pretty much, well, more than that as well, 12 months probably more 18 months maybe a little bit longer uh, but we couldn't get it over the line last season he went to join Fulham and they were on absolute rampage last season and Mitrovic just did just blew the league away and I think it was very difficult for him to get minutes but I think this could be a really good fit for us Dan. I, I really really do but what's your thoughts on the deal and what do you think he can bring to the club I think it's a it's an intriguing deal more than one that excites me because with the ensemble that we have at present now with Matthew Hoppy and um, Marcus Force and then with Rodrigo Muniz as well, none of those players have really been established stars in their side. You know, Hoppy 
was never meant to be the answer for Schalke in their horrendous season that ended up in relegation. He just so happened to become almost close to that. Marcus Force, the most appearances off the bench in the Championship in the season that Brentford went up in 2020-21. And then with Rodrigo Muniz, uh, 60 appearances, uh, accumulating 1,951 minutes and 16 of those were starts. Now, it was difficult to find exactly how many starts that he has had. Um, I had to kind of do it totally up myself. So apologies if I've got that a little bit wrong but basically he's not had too many starts in his career but it's it's a deal with potential as Sammy has said he is raw I don't think we should expect miracles from him straight away but there's certain parts of his game that are of interest and that could really fit in really well and and one of those is I think a good turn of pace he seems to as Sammy alluded to like the little flicks and tricks but also the kind of turn and release and turn and, and run is something that I've seen from the clips that I've seen of Rodrigo Munez where he just takes around the corner of players and then advances the player progresses the player uh, so maybe a little bit of a foil there for Marcus Four, somebody that can work well together um, it's it, yeah it's intriguing I'm looking forward to seeing how he does because uh, he's been somebody that Borough wanted for a while. I think he's been um, excited himself to sign for Middlesbrough, hence all of the likes on Twitter, and, and hopefully he mm. can do the talking on the pitch now as well. Yeah, I think so too. You know, it's it's going to be a, a transfer which I think I think excites fans a little bit. You know, any Brazilian that ends up on T side somehow. <laughs> becomes a god for about a few weeks and then uh with one or two bad performances later it might say otherwise but um yeah i think it's a yeah i think it's a really good deal i think we should kind of compare him to andros Sparra a little bit from last year because you know he was our main center forward for a long period of time i think there is some similarities um towards him i'm just going to pull up a graph there on, on, and if you're watching us on youtube you can see this but if you listen to us on the podcast providers as well i'll break it down for you but they played Similar amount of games last year, you know, 35 to 34, um, 35 for Spira, 34 for Munis. But Munis had 600 minutes less um, in comparison to Andros Spira. Um, XG-wise, um, they both underperformed, but, um, you know, in terms of underperforming, <laughs> Andros Spira massively <laughs> underperformed. Uh, he had an XG of 10 and only con- only scored uh, six goals last year. Um, no, sorry, seven goals last year. And then... Munis only scored uh, the six and, you know, um, well, no, sorry, it's only got, it's got the four, but his XG was was six. So, you know, they're, they're both underachieved, but I think what the di- main differences are between them both is that Munis really does like to get in the box and, you know, he's a really good dribbler. Uh, to yeah, tra- he lo- I was going to say he loves a dribble there. In those tight moments, in those in those tight spaces, is where he's relatively quite good. He's comfortable on the ball. He's a bit of an enigma, like Sammy mentioned, where you might see him be a little bit rash at times. But most of the time, when he's in that spot, he'll tend to put it away quite nicely. And, he, you know, last year, he was limited to minutes, limited to uh, moments on the pitch. But when he had the chance, he tended to put it away. But given that his chances were quite limited, I think that's the reason why we see some of his stats not be as good as what it can be. And I think this player needs a lot of minutes to become quite good. But when we talk about shots as well, um, shot conversion was a a key one because Spira had a much higher shot conversion at 10% in comparison to um, Munis, which had about 7%. But it came from more shots, really, in in terms of... in in, More shots in key positions, really, uh, for, for Spira. But... And I think, but I think overall, I think it's a relatively quite a good deal. They're quite similar in terms of statistics, but in terms of dribbling and trying to super a system, um, I think this one could be quite a good deal for us. Um, and I think he's going to probably link up the player quite nicely. But if you want to compare it to players, I think it's going to be him and Force, which could be quite similar to some extent around the dribbling side of things. But I definitely think it's an improvement, probably season on season. I think we've improved from having Spira and obviously Watmore and Balogun and, and Connolly, I think there's an improvement there with Force, Akpom and, and, and Munis coming in the building. And I think we need one more strike, one or two strikers as well, one more striker to come in as well. And we'll come on to that in a little bit, uh, a little bit later. But is there any more research, Dana, that you found um, on, on Rodrigo Munis? Um, is there, what have the Fulham fans been thinking about him? Yeah, the Fulham fans have some quite insightful uh, opinions about him there was a 
a period initially where he came in and he looked a little bit like a, a fish out of water. Somebody said that he looks like a horse on the pitch. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, <laughs> but um, I don't think it was particularly complimentary. But there's, there's a bit of a redemption arc here, as, as uh, Fulham fans are saying, that he worked really hard, constantly was a nuisance against physical and experienced defenders, and some of his touches to keep possession were really impressive. Uh, and then there's, there's further praise to that as well. I was really encouraged by Moon's performance on Wednesday. His work rate, pace, strength and presence was all very good. He will get sharper in front of goal. He snatched at a couple of chances. Once he settles properly, I think we'll have a great asset in the squad who will score goals. And then I have absolutely love some foreign names by the way this is from somebody from Ara's Bacon Crisps <laughs> they say he was that. excellent <laughs> I know. he was excellent yesterday and should also mention just how many headers he won from goal kicks etc that's not Mitro's strength but this gives us an extra tactic when the others realize he is going to win them regularly and can anticipate his flick-ons and those flick-ons I did notice in in clips not so much with his head but with his feet you know the, the, as I said the kind of turn and swim mm. around the corner really good and then to add to that his goal per minute ratio uh, a goal every 98 minutes in the championship last season and a goal every 160 minutes in his career so far that is per transfer mark so there's potential there for him I think that's the key word my only annoyance with this move and it's a small annoyance really and, and people might roll their eyes at this but we obviously caught him for a while and now he's at another club and we're technically developing another team's player now so mm. there's that but then there's also the potential of Bora Pate like, too many potentials in that sentence. There is the potential of Borough maybe going in and getting him on a permanent deal should he be a success or should Borough themselves be a success. So, yeah, it's a little bit frustrating that, you know, we've obviously targeted him for this long. Now he's at another club and we are or could potentially do another team a favour there in developing one of their assets. I'd much rather him be our asset, to be honest, but that's just selfish reasons there. But, yeah, um, I think a, a deal that that could could really work. I, I agree. I, I agree. Um, I could see frustrations as well around the development side of things. I think the only way we were able to keep him at Millsborough is if Fulham stay up this year in the Premier League. Um, yeah. There'll be a reliance on him probably next year if he does the business this year to try and get them back up again um, in, in the Premier League. And depending on Mitrovic wanting to stay, you know, 40 goals, well, just shy of 40 goals last season. So I can't really, you know, um, fandom him dropping back down again maybe yeah, yeah I think yeah. it'd be very difficult but yeah I think with, with Munoz he's got to do well this transfer window or this this transfer this, this season sorry um to to really shine and hopefully we can develop him and keep him around but for Bora now it's it's a case of we've brought in that number nine day but can you see him playing as more of a lone striker or as part of a pairing because we haven't really work that out just yet you know there's obviously there's the rotation of McGree in there we have got strikers in the building um which I'm going to come on to next but just, can you see him more of a, a lone striker or can you see him in, in a bit of a pairing I think you have to who? put him in a, yeah I think you have to put him in a pair and I think with force because force mm. is a poacher we need to allow him to show his strengths rather than show what he maybe lacks and we cannot have Force up front on his own, nor can we have Muniz up front on his own either, I don't think. So the best formation for Borough going forward is the 3-5-2. And I know we played a 3-5-1-1 of late with McGree in the hole behind the striker. But I think to get the best out of this this system and this squad, this team, you have to have a poacher. And if you've got a poacher in the team, you've got to have that service, not just on the wings, but a striker that, you know, in the David McGoldrick role, for example, when he was at Sheffield United and Wilder was there as well. Somebody that can be involved in the build-up play, that can make the ball stick. We were missing that against Reading. At Pom came on against QPR and provided us with that. So if we can have somebody like Mooners, I think they could be the perfect foil. But um, yeah, my my worry is that it could it could either go one or one of two ways. It could either really come together and be a fantastic assortment of strikers, or it could be a case of we see they're just simply strikers with potential that aren't going to deliver in the present. And I'm hoping it's more the former than the latter because Wilder said Force is a development sign and Hoppy is as well. I would assume Muniz is in the same bracket. That's not to say they can't deliver now. But I think we will see the kind of rawness of them. As I said, none of them have mm. been established strikers, main men. I still think there's a main man for to come in for Borough. Um, but there's there's potential there, which is good. 
Yeah, it definitely is. And I think with with this forward line of, of Force and and, and Munis, for me, I think we might have to change um, formation ever so slightly. Uh, my concern around Munis and, and, and Force is that build-up play in, in key moments and trying to get the ball out wide to the wingers and trying to get yourself in the box. For me, I think we might just lack that connecting, connecting piece between the forwards and the midfielders. So we might see that 3-1-4-2 move to a 3-4-1-2 and have a Riley McGree in that cam role, maybe push House mm-hmm. up with a Crux or a, or an Alex Mount. And I feel like that will probably be able to give Bor- Bor- a, a lot more connectivity um, and a bit more fluidness within those, t- in the, those tight spaces, the low blocks that we see t- teams have. I think that we could have probably done that against Reading um, where we could have unlocked something a little bit different. Um, and I think... That is the only probably negative I have of the transfer is that we just need someone to make sure it sticks when we need it to stick and try to connect that forward line from the midfield. But we could do that. We've got the we've got the player to do it. We've got the players definitely to do it as well. In that three four one two, yes, it's more offensive, and it might not. We we need, we need a strong back line. You know, good forwards win your games, but a good defense wins your titles. And we need to make sure we we have that steadiness in defense first. And then we move out to that different formation if we were to do so. But only negative I have on the transfer, other than that, I think it's a really good deal. Goal every 168 minutes in his career, which is like equivalent to 0.68 per game. Good dribbler, good ratios last season when we needed him to be. And he's good in those tight spaces. So what we can find is if we get that ball in the box, he should deliver in, in those moments. But with him coming in now, Dana, you know, Borough is still in the market for one more striker as well. Strand Larson's name always gets thrown about. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is no Moonis now. There's Force, there's Hoppy, there's Akpom, there's Watmore, there's Corburn, there's six strikers um, at the club. And, you know, that is a lot. You know, we could have potentially seven at, at, at the most, but who's leaving? Or is anyone going to leave? Are we just going to have a bank full of, of strikers? I think you have to say Watmore because yeah. reports have come out saying that Borough will listen uh, to offers for what more and I just think as we've said on the podcast before as Bora try to get to that next level what more is incredibly erratic we've seen that in his finishing and that sort of part of somebody's game the up and down is probably it does say to me maybe a mid-table sort of player and what more has been fantastic for us. Um, nobody really expected him to be, but I think now's probably the time that we look to maybe move what more on, as we've obviously discussed before. So Akpom's had his opportunity and he's taken it. Um, what more did take his opportunity against Stoke, but I think out of all of them, you're probably looking at what more and then Corburn when he gets back from injury, but that will probably be January, won't it? Mm, I think it's a long market still open after. After the no window shut, anymore. I'm not too sure how it, it all because it was a, an adjustment. But we, you know, if you if you know, let us know in the comments below. But then I thank you very much uh, for for joining me uh, on this Rodrigo Munis lowdown pod, podcast show. Um, and thank you very much for <laughs> listening as well to watching us and listening to us on our podcast providers. And if you like our podcast and you want to vote for us in the football content awards, please do um, and vote for us for the best podcast in the EFL because that would just be. Pretty cool. A small podcast from Borough getting an award like that. So um, thank you very much, Dana, and thank you very much, listeners. But this has been the Borough Breakdown podcast, and that was all your Rodrigo Moon is chatter in a pod. Up the Borough Breakdown.